If you're finding that the pressure on your boiler keeps going down and you keep having to top it up regularly, then I'm afraid the bad news is it's not going to solve itself. And if anything, it's going to keep getting worse until the thing stops working. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to work out where that pressure loss is coming from, whether you can do anything about it yourself and when you need to call in a plumber. The problem of pressure loss in a central heating system is one of the most common. I've had this problem myself in the past, and I know in the last week or so, a family member of mine has had the same issue to the point where they've had to recharge and refill their system daily to make sure that the boiler is working before the engineer can come and sort it out. Now, if you're having to refill and recharge your system maybe two or three times a year, I would call that normal. And the reason it goes down, I'll get to a little bit later. But if you're doing it monthly or weekly or even more regularly than that, then I would say you've definitely got a problem. And as I said in the intro, this isn't a problem that tends to solve itself. It's something that's going to get worse and worse. And you're going to find you get to a point where the boiler realizes it hasn't got enough pressure and will just refuse to work. And you know by experience, don't you, that that's going to be on Christmas Day or when you've got family coming around or someone's birthday. So it's best to try to attack this, get it solved before it turns into a complete disaster. Now, to explain why we end up with a pressure loss in a system, first thing we need to do is explain how central heating system works. So I think we need a bit of a sketch. So that speeds things up a little bit. So just to explain my sketch here, essentially what we've got is the heart of the system is the boiler with the big B on it. And that essentially just heats colder water into hotter water. Then it comes round to our system. It heats up things like radiators and underfloor heating. And in bigger properties, generally, we still use a cylinder where this water in this system will heat water that's in the cylinder that will then go off to showers and baths. But that water is completely separate to the water you find in this system. Now, these days, most of us will be using what we call condenser boilers, because since 2005, condenser boilers are the only ones that have been allowed to be sold of this type. And all that means is that there's another process in the boiler that really sucks out as much energy as possible before it goes out in smoke outside. You'll know that you've got a condenser boiler because generally, rather than fumes coming out the outlet outside, you'll see smoke. And also, your, the outlet will probably be made out of plastic rather than metal or aluminium. So in normal day-to-day -day operation, we can consider this a closed system. The water that's in here is just going round in circles. It's going into the boiler cooler. It's getting heated up. It's then transferring its energy into the air by radiators or underfloor heating or into water by a tank and then going back into the boiler and just going round and round in circles. So the only way that we can find a pressure loss in a system like this is if we take some of that water or air and water out of the system. And the first way we do that intentionally is by bleeding radiators. Now, naturally in time, the water in the system reacts with the pipes and the radiators. And depending on the level of inhibitor in that system, can have a chemical reaction and produce hydrogen that ends up in our radiators. That's why we need to bleed them often and essentially remove that air. And once we've gone around and bled radiators, removing that air and maybe a little bit of water from each radiator is enough to lower the pressure in this whole system, which is where we then need to go and top it up and make sure we're back to maybe one or one and a half bar. But that's obviously intentional. So where do we lose the pressure when we're not bleeding radiators? Well, the first obvious cause is if we've got any leaks in this system, any leaks around radiators or any of our pipe work. So it's really important, if you think you've got a problem, that you go around your house and you look at each radiator and all the pipe work you can find, looking for any leaks or drips. If you find any compression fittings leaking at radiators, these need to be done up tight because in time, just that gradual leak from any of the system will reduce the pressure. And if you're unlucky, you may find you've got a leak somewhere that you can't initially see, like 
under a floorboard or behind a wall or within plaster. But it's pretty uncommon, unless you've done something in your house to cause that leak, like put a pin in the wall to hold a painting up and just manage to hit a water pipe. But generally, leaks like that will show themselves fairly quickly with staining or damp patch or water coming out, but they're pretty uncommon. There's more common things within this system that will probably cause a pressure loss. And the first one is to do with expansion. You see, as water heats up, it expands. I think that's Charles law. It's not Boyle's law, that's pressure and volume. So as you put energy into water, it expands and it expands more than you may think. Recently, I did a bit of an experiment in a closed system. And the one thing I was surprised to see is how much and how quickly it expands when you put heat into it. And in this case, even a small amount. So in our heating system here, which is like a thousand times bigger than that experiment example, there's going to be a reasonable amount of expansion and we need to deal with it in some way. Now, the way that used to be done once upon a time is you'd have an expansion tank in the loft and as the water expands, it would go up there, dump into the tank and then refill itself. These days, we tend not to have that. So we use something else called an expansion vessel, which is generally a circular type ball that's got a membrane in the middle that moves backwards and forwards to essentially take up the slack. So this membrane sits in the middle, half full of water and half full of air. And it means that that membrane can move in and out, taking up that expansion. Generally, if you've got a bigger central heating system, you'll have one on the outside, and generally most boilers will have a small one on the inside, but that's really only designed for the expansion of the boiler. If you've got a bigger central heating system, you'll also have a separate expansion tank. Now, how can an expansion tank lead to lowering the pressure of our system? Well, the membrane that's in an expansion tank moves continuously in operation. So it's quite common in time that this membrane can fail. And if it does fail, essentially water will fill that tank. Once the expansion tank is full of water, then it can't expand anymore. So we have a problem with where does the water go if you put the heating on, it warms up and it's got nowhere to expand to. Well, there is a system that's designed to keep the whole water system safe if that happens. In your boiler, you end up with a safety valve that will let water out if the whole system rises above a certain pressure, probably normally around about three bar. So you end up with a safety relief valve that ends up dumping water outside to reduce the pressure rather than just exploding. And this safety relief valve only kicks in when the system is working, the pressure has gone up to a point where it's starting to get dangerous. The, the valve opens, releases water to keep the whole thing safe. Now, the best way of finding out if this is happening is to look outside because for every boiler there will be an outside vent where this water will get released to if it, that safety release valve kicks in. It's normally in copper and my one has a cage around it because if it does release it's going to have hot water in it so therefore there's a cage around it to stop anyone getting burnt. So the best way of seeing if this is happening is to put something underneath that pipe so you can have a look at it a few days later to see if it's releasing water. So if you have a failed expansion tank, what you'll find is that when the system is off, it's easy to pressurize it to the right pressure, which is one to one and a half bar. But as soon as you turn it on, the water's got nowhere to expand to, the safety relief valve kicks in, and it will dump water out of the vent out the back of your house. Once the system is turned off again and everything's cooled down, you'll find that that pressure is now a lot lower because it's got rid of water in the system and the tray that you put out the back of your house underneath the vent has now got water in it. So that's the way you find out if the, the expansion tank is not working. Now, as a DIYer, it is possible to replace an external expansion tank like that if, you, if you've got the right knowledge and in some ways the right tools. It's easy to replace, but you do have to commission it properly and put the right amount of pressure in the top where the baffle is. And if you've got the gauges and the pumps to do that, you can do that as a DIYer. However, if the 
the expansion tank within your boiler has gone, then you, as a DIY, you can't do anything anything about that. Anything in within this boiler, you need to be a gas safe engineer. It's a bit like working on your consumer unit. You really need a qualified electrician. Anything within this boiler, you need a qualified plumber to carry out any work. Now, there is another problem in this boiler that can cause you problems, and it's called automatic air vents. Now, this is a system within your boiler that dissipates air if it gets trapped in the boiler. It's a bit like having an automatic system that bleeds your radiator, but it's in the boiler. So if there is air in the boiler, there's a float switch that lets that air out, but not the water. However, this is a mechanical system, and in time, it can start just letting through water rather than just air, especially if you've got gunk and bits and pieces in that water. It can just start getting blocked up. And then before you know it, you're dripping water out of that vent 24 hours a day, which means that your pressure is going to be going down continuously. Now, there is one way without actually taking the cover off of working out whether that's happening. Because underneath just about every boiler, there will be a valve for the inlet and outlet. So if we close off these valves, then essentially we've isolated the boiler. Then if we leave it for a period, if that pressure falls, we know that something in that boiler with the whole system off is letting water. And it's probably then going to be the automatic air valves. But unfortunately, once again, this has to be done by a qualified plumber because it's in the boiler. So you're not allowed to get into that boiler to do any of that. And it's a little bit complicated anyway. So probably best left to the professionals. So I hope that gives you an idea of what's happening within your central heating system. I would highly recommend keeping an eye on that outside vent to see if it's dripping or leaking water. And with a bit of fault finding, which I've just described, there's a good chance that you'll be able to work out for yourself what the problem is, even if it's in the boiler and you can't do anything about it yourself. When you get a price from the plumber, if you sound like you know what you're doing, you may get a better price rather than someone trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.